Trying to find a really powerful laptop that isn't a big and bulky gaming machine or made by Apple is a surprisingly hard thing to do. Well, we saw this gap in the market and is attempting to fill it with this. The 2024 MateBook 16D. A sleek and stylish 16 inch laptop that packs quite a punch and is relatively affordable too. But how does it actually hold up? Well, to find out, Huawei was kind enough to fly us over to Dubai for their launch event. Now, not only did we get a look at the new D16, but also a few other cool pieces of tech they have coming soon. The orders have already been put in and they're on their way. So I'm excited to share that with you in a later video. Looking at the overall design and build of the D16, it sits somewhere in the middle when it comes to size. It's quite a bit thinner than most gaming machines, although it is slightly bulkier than something like the 15 inch MacBook. But when I say bulkier, I do not mean heavier by any means. This thing only weighs 1.7 kilograms. Now to put that into comparison, most 16 inch laptops weighs about 2.4, 2.5 kilograms. That is a whole bag of sugar. Imagine having to carry that around with you all day. The D16's overall build quality is pretty sturdy. It's made out of a high quality aluminum, although there is some flex in places like the keyboard, but it's nothing too serious. The finish feels good to the touch and the mystic silver colorway looks fantastic. The MateBook D16 comes with a USB type C Gen 3.2 port, two USB type A ports, one 3.2 gen, while the other one is still a USB 2.0 for some reason, a 3.2 millimeter dual headphone jack for audio and a HDMI 2.0 for display. Now, if you're planning on picking up one of these for yourselves, I would highly recommend also getting yourself a multi-port adapter, like for ethernet and SD card purposes, and also more USB type C ports, because this year's model only has a single USB type C port, and it uses it for charging. Opening up the D16 comes with a surprising full layout keyboard with a numpad, which I know can be a deal breaker for some people. The chiclet style keys feel decent to type on with a slight rough texture to them. There's some flicks as I mentioned before, but you really shouldn't notice it unless you're a really heavy typist. The keys are also backlit, which comes in handy if you're a night owl or you're just working dimly lit areas. The screen is a 16 inch IPS panel with a resolution of 1080 by 1200 p The panel itself isn't anything too special. It has an advertised Mac brightness of 300 nits and the colors look good as you would expect from an IPS panel. It also has 100% sRGB color space coverage, although it doesn't support HDR or anything like that. The screen has been finished with a matte coating, which I am a big fan of. It just helps cut out the background reflections, which makes working on it a lot less distracting. And for somebody with HD, AMD like me, it's really great. As for the refresh rate, it only has a 60 Hertz panel, but as the MateBook doesn't really have a dedicated GPU as an option, a higher refresh rate screen isn't really necessary. The MateBook D16 comes in a few different options with the main difference being the processor. The 2024 model comes with either an i5 or an i9 13th generation chip, both of which have Intel Iris integrated GPUs, 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. It is worth noting though that the RAM is soldered onto the board, so it's not really upgradable, unfortunately. Well, performance wise, the laptop runs smoothly. We tested out both the i5 and the i9 versions and we're more than happy with both of them, although the jump between the performance really stood out to us. There's a massive jump from the i5 to the i9, where the i5 feels quite average and the i9 feels exceptional. So if you're somebody that really puts your machine to the test, I'd recommend go for the i9 option as the little bit more that you're going to be spending will be worth it. One thing I do want to bring up though is I noticed when working with this laptop on my lap, it did get quite hot and that's just because of the fan placement. So if you do plan on using your laptop for some more demanding tasks, I'd highly recommend either putting the laptop on your desk or on a little fan stand. As for battery life, the i5 model comes with a 56 watt hour battery, while the i9 model has a larger 70 watt hour battery. This is just to help offset the extra battery draw that you get from the higher performance chip. Realistically though, you should see anything from about 11 to 15 hours of battery life depending on the usage. Although if you do run low on battery power, the laptop does come with a very nice 60 watt type C charger, which is fast charging. Webcam is a 720p camera, which looks and sounds exactly what you'd expect it to look and sound like. It's not 4K Ultra HD, but it does use AI to help get the job done. And let's be honest, for most Zoom calls and situations, you don't really want people to be able to count the pores on your face anyways. It also does have a built-in fingerprint scanner and easily pairs with other Huawei devices using their smart office system, which over the last few months has really become something impressive. 
I'd love to make some videos on that, so hold on tight. And if you're interested in seeing some ecosystem videos, please do click on the subscribe button, which is right down here. The laptop is a really good workhorse, designed for everyday productivity enthusiasts and people who like to subscribe to WeDo Tech, like you. There's also an improved Wi-Fi antenna built into the laptop that keeps you connected in situations where the Wi-Fi signal might get a little bit rough, which I really appreciate. There's nothing worse than buffering WeDo Tech videos and websites that take way too long to load. Overall, I'd say Huawei came out with a pretty solid option, especially if you're in the market for something that's a little bit more powerful, but not as bulky as a gaming PC, and that comes in at a great budget price. The graphics card is not really a need if you're not gonna be gaming at max settings, and the i9 they used in here is really exceptional. The only thing I can really say about this laptop that they might have been able to upgrade on is the ports. I'd love to have more USB-C ports, but the other brand also did the same, so who cares anyways? And maybe the 720p webcam, but most of us don't stream to YouTube, um, so that's really not necessary. That was Weedy Tech with a review on the MateBook D16. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Cheers, bye.